So you know if one is getting involved, something's going on and there actually might be some significant performance enhancing benefits from a natural supplement, which is pretty wild to think about. Guys, I want you to check out this message I got on Instagram. And the amount of messages I get from guys every day saying that they've done a cycle or they're on TRT and they've come off or they just are natural and they've got low testosterone and they're trying to fix it. I get so many messages like that every single day from guys who are pretty much unsure what to do. So in this video, I'm going to speak about natural testosterone supplements that you can use to boost your testosterone using the science. There is a lot of rubbish out there with supplement companies that claim that their products can boost testosterone. But I'm going to go through the key supplements that you need if you want to boost your testosterone naturally. Of course, it's not a miracle, but in most cases, I think you can actually get around 15% to 50% or more increases in total T levels. And I've seen this in blood work from guys that I've worked with. For example, we had one guy that was down at 200 nanograms per deciliter after abusing steroids in his early 20s and we got him back up to 750 nanograms per deciliter, which is an amazing result naturally. And there are supplements that you can take naturally to actually boost your testosterone. I'm going to split this video into three parts and put supplements into three different categories. The first category is supplements that directly boost testosterone, supplements that boost luteinizing hormone, and supplements that work on the overall HPT axis health and efficiency of your HPT axis, but don't directly touch LH or testosterone. So T1 are supplements with plant or insect-based steroids. And this is a direct pathway. So in this pathway, we're talking about compounds that have very similar structures to testosterone, but that either plants or insects create. Often as a defense mechanism, for example, plants will create hormones as a defensive mechanism when under stress or attack. And if you look at the structure of these plant or insect steroids, you can see there is a big similarity between those steroids and testosterone in men. So the idea is that these kind of supplements can work in conjunction with testosterone and mimic some effects of the male hormone in men, in human men, testosterone, and may be able to fulfill some of the functions that testosterone has. Not only this, but there is evidence that because you are having more androgens in your system as a result of these compounds and their structure being similar, they can interact with SHBG, reducing SHBG and freeing up your total testosterone so you get more bioavailable free testosterone in your circulation. I've seen this on blood work before quite a bit. So in this category, it's really about supplements that can directly influence your testosterone levels by either being a similar mimic to the actual structure chemically of testosterone or by influencing SHBG and boosting free testosterone. What are the supplements? Fenugreek, which is a plant from certain family of plants that is often sold as a seed or powder. Tribulus, which is another plant used in herbal medicine. Fedosia agrestis, which is an African shrub used again in traditional remedies. Turkesterone, which is a compound extracted from plants and it is categorized as an ectosteroid, which is similar to what insects create. And Tonkat Ali, another plant from a certain family where the root is often used in herbal medicine as a powder. And if we look at the evidence quickly, fenugreek, has shown a significant increase in both free and total testosterone in studies. For example, in this study, with 600 milligrams fenugreek in 16 men, fenugreek increased total testosterone by 28% and free testosterone by 37.5%, which is actually a really big increase naturally. Tribulus increased testosterone 27% in a three-month study. Fedosia has been shown to significantly increase testosterone in rats and rodent studies. And if we look at this graph, which is a study about Fedosia aggressus in rats, you can see just how much it increases in a dose-dependent manner testosterone levels. And it's kind of wild to think about that. Turkesterone with its high degree of ectosteroids, which I li like I said, are the insect-derived steroid structure, had some pretty cool results. In this study, ectosteroids significantly increased bench press, back squat, and muscle mass values to the point where even the researchers themselves were like, hang on, this needs to be added to the WADA prohibited drug list because there could be athletes that abuse ectosteroids for performance reasons. So you know if is getting involved, something's going on and there actually might be some significant performance enhancing benefits from a natural supplement, which is pretty wild to think about considering most of the things on the WADA list are pharmaceutical grade steroids or some other form of pharmaceutical performance enhancing drugs. And the final big one is Tonka Ali. 
which has been shown to significantly increase testosterone without affecting LH, luteinizing hormone or FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. So in a way, this is why Tomcat is in this category because it's a direct mechanism on testosterone rather than touching the gonadotropins that stimulate testosterone production. In this study across 32 males, Tomcat only increased total T by 15% and free T by 34% with no significant alterations in FSH or LH showing that it doesn't really touch the HPT axis apart from influencing the testosterone level itself. Tier two is a category where we're looking now at supplements that directly influence luteinizing hormone. Now that we've looked at supplements that touch testosterone on its own, what supplements naturally can influence the actual production upstream of testosterone? What supplements can actually influence, for example, luteinizing hormone? And if you're wondering what that is, if you know anything about my channel, I talk about endocrinology a lot. Luteinizing hormone is one of the primary hormones responsible for telling your body to create testosterone and it's released from the brain and once it reaches the male testicles, it essentially tells the testicles to produce testosterone and this is why compounds like enclomiphene or clomiphene during PCT, for example, or enclomiphene monotherapy significantly increase testosterone because they boost luteinizing hormone. So these supplements don't directly influence testosterone and are not mimics of testosterone per se, but act on your brain to boost LH and indirectly tell your body to produce more testosterone. The biggest player here is ashwagandha, as it can directly upregulate LH levels and therefore increase testosterone. In this study, you can see that supplementation of ashwagandha significantly boosted LH and as a result, testosterone production rose similar to, like I said, using a serum like Clomid. And it's not just one study that backs this up. In this study from the year 2000, so 24 years ago, ashwagandha boosted LH by 37.6% when dosed at 47 milligrams per 100 grams body weight per day in rodents just across six days. So really the supplement ashwagandha can significantly increase your luteinizing hormone production, which will tell your body to produce more testosterone. Now for the third category, which are indirect supplements that tackle the overall health of your HPT axis. So Nothing in particular but the efficiency and the overall general health of how it's actually operating. If you look at the entire pathway of how our body creates testosterone, it starts all the way up at cholesterol and there are many different conversions and intermediate compounds that are involved in eventually getting to testosterone. And I like to think of supplements in this category as like lubricating the entire pathway. It's not going to significantly touch testosterone downstream, but it is going to make the entire pathway more efficient. And there are supplements that do this because a lot of these conversions and molecular changes on the way from cholesterol to testosterone are done by enzymes. And you can directly make these enzymes more efficient. For example, zinc can be essential for the proper functioning of a lot of these enzymes, which are involved in testosterone synthesis. If you actually think about it, a lot of these structures are very similar, but there are subtle differences. If you look at estrogen, for example, and testosterone, chemically, they look pretty similar, but there are just a few subtle differences. And this is what enzymatic processes and cofactors in our body do. They help our body turn molecules into different molecules with small changes here and there. And zinc has a big part to play in making these processes more efficient. It acts as cofactors for enzymes like 5-alpha reductase and various other processes. So if you are low on zinc, you're going to be significantly hampering your body's ability to convert cholesterol into testosterone and therefore probably have lower testosterone levels than you would have otherwise. Another supplement in this category would be something like boron. Boron at three to five milligrams per day has shown to reduce SHBG. And by reducing SHBG, if you have high SHBG and you reduce it, you're going to get more of your free testosterone being unbound and therefore being able to be used by the body. Certainly I've seen on men so many times that they have good total testosterone, but it's all being bound up and held by SHBG. Freeing some of that up can actually help them have a higher proportion of that total testosterone as free, unbound, and able to exert its testosterone. Positive effects like muscle mass, mood, libido, cognitive changes, energy, all of those things. And then of course, cholesterol itself. So many guys I see that come to me and I go through their blood work and look at how they're feeling, something's not adding up, and I look at their blood work and how they're feeling, and what, in a lot of cases, what has happened is when I ask them, they go, oh yeah, I'm actually in a massive deficit because I'm prepping for a bodybuilding show or I'm just in a massive caloric deficit. When you're in a big deficit, for example, you're not getting 
much intake of fats. Cholesterol is a precursor to testosterone synthesis. So if you don't have much cholesterol in your body, your body doesn't even have the precursor molecule to make testosterone. So of course, your testosterone is gonna be low. So increasing your healthy cholesterol or healthy fats in your diet is going to make a big difference if your testosterone is low and your cholesterol is also low because you're not intaking fats into your diet. So things like eggs, fatty fish, nuts and seeds, olive oil, avocados, lean meats, shellfish, dairy products, dark chocolate, leafy green vegetables, all of these things have a high proportion of good healthy fats, often rich in monounsaturated fats, and all of these things may help boost your testosterone levels if the precursor cholesterol is very low or if you're in a caloric deficit, for example, and struggling with low testosterone levels on your blood work. So there you go, guys, a little update on the science, three categories. The first one, things that directly mimic testosterone as a chemical structure in your body. These are things like plant and insect steroids. The second one are supplements that are going to increase your luteinizing hormone and tell your body to create more endogenous testosterone without necessarily being a similar chemical structure to testosterone. And then of course, the third one is the overall HPT axis health and efficiency and making that more efficient will allow your body to convert cholesterol into testosterone more efficiently. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.